Good morning, guys, and welcome to your financial show, your market report for this Wednesday, August 15th, 2018. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about this morning is Turkey. Uh, Turkey's in the news. Of course, there's a financial crisis going on in Turkey right now as we speak. Let's open the charts up right here, and uh, let's go over and let's take a look at Turkey in the news. The Turkish Lira crisis. Turkey now in a new development today, they've raised tariffs on all U.S. goods. Um, <clears throat> ramped up the U.S. spat, huge tariffs on cars and other goods. Uh, so Turkey's in the news for making this financial crisis. So let's run over and let's take a look at the uh, at the Dow Jones Industrial Average right now uh, with all this Turkey stuff going on. Um, we see very, very small volumes, and we see the market falling off 158 points so far today uh, on very, very small volumes are very small today. Now, let's take a look at the uh, oil prices today. Uh, we've lost, we've lost 72 cents on oil. It's down 107 uh, percent, 1.07 percent. So oil prices are falling too. Uh, let's take a look at the silver price today. Uh, silver price is falling, fourteen dollars and seventy-two cents. Now, what's the main thing you keep hearing me saying right now while this Turkish crisis is happening? What's the biggest thing I'm saying over and over and over again? Prices are falling, falling on commodities, falling prices. But but what's the dollar doing? Uh, let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index. 96, almost 97, we're seeing the dollar going up. So what all this is indicative of and what all this means is that uh, the situations in the world are causing what I thought would actually happen is deflationary uh, spike event. Uh, we're right trembling on the edge of a deflationary spike event. And the biggest reason why is because liquidity has been drained out of the system. And to explain to you what's going on is, say you had a guy, and say his name was George, and he went to, uh, he worked where you work, right? And say George was a hard worker and everything, you know, and, and uh, he always had his coffee in the morning. You knew George very well, and he was a really a stand-up guy. He was always there. Uh, say you were working in construction, he was always there to carry the rebar over and put it into the into the in, into the forms to make cement and stuff. You know, and he's a hard worker. Say, uh, uh, all of a sudden one day you went in there and he wasn't working so hard that day. He says, "I don't feel good." Yeah, I say, "Well, George, what's wrong with you?" He says, "No, I don't really feel all that good today." Uh, so he, the boss says, "Well, take it a little bit easy today, George. Don't work real hard." So he, that's the way it goes all day that day. And, but everything goes along fine. You don't really think that much is wrong with George. But the next day he comes into work, and he's really pale looking. He looks kind of whitish looking and stuff. You know, what's wrong with him? But he's still working, so you don't pay too much attention to him. Well, mid-afternoon, all of a sudden, George collapses on the construction site. So they go over and they check George. And they take him, rush him to the hospital, and they find he's low on blood. Say, so, well, why? Well, I come to find out, you know, uh, he had something wrong with his bowels or something. He was bleeding inside, you know. Who knew? You couldn't see on the inside of him. You couldn't see that money. That that money, you see, I'm mean, comparing it now to the system. You can't see the money bleeding out of the system right now. The Fed is bleeding the money out of the system right now. At the tune of $40 billion every month, they're sucking it out of the system. And they think they can get away with this. Oh, I'm, I almost use a dirty word. They think they can get away with this business, this baloney that they're pulling, right? Draining forty billion dollars a month out of the system, and seemingly they've been seemingly getting away with it because there's been a number of other factors going on behind the scenes that have been letting them get away with it. But this ultimately is going to end very badly in a deflationary, what I call a deflationary spike event, which is a sudden period, uh, a sudden onset of deflation. 
Now, how are they going to react to this? Is they're going to pump the money into the system, and that's what's going to destroy this dollar. So this dollar is going to go up and up and up during the deflation, like it's going up now. And then all of a sudden, they're going to turn the switch around. The Fed's going to get scared because they realize what they've done. They're going to be frightened then at that point. They're going to try to turn everything around 180 degrees, you know. And what's going to happen then is 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 that's when the dollar is going to start to be destroyed, and you're going to see uh, prices on everything else start to go up. That's when oil uh, is going to go up. That's when the uh, uh, your gold and your silver is going to go up. That's when your cryptocurrencies are going to go up. Everything's going to go up except this dollar is going to go down. Right now, it's the opposite of that. Right now, everything's going down. The dollar's going up. See? So that's what's going on in a nutshell. Um, let's take a look at the cryptocurrency today and see what it's doing. It's suffering like everything else. But uh, it's it's staying low. It's staying low. It's presenting a buying opportunity. Uh, yesterday was a better buying opportunity. The prices went up a little bit. Uh, that's sad. You know, but uh, that's the way it is. This price is going up a little bit. She's found a floor uh, at around $6,000 is the floor. And she's bouncing along that floor. Will she break through that floor and go lower? That is, I've put a 50-50 on that. 50% 50, 50 chance it won't, 50% chance it will. So if it goes higher, of course, you make money. And if it goes below that floor, you lose money. And so you got a 50-50 chance. That's just as good as Las Vegas. <laughs> so go ahead and invest. Well, it's acting a lot better than Las Vegas, actually, because I don't believe you'll ever see Bitcoin go below $4,000 again. Uh, but uh, that being said, she could go lower than she is right now before she turns back up again. Uh, cryptocurrency market capitalizations today. Uh, we're looking at all the coins, most most of them anyway. Tether uh, uh, is 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 well, Tether is tethered, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, most of the coins are going up today. Uh, we're seeing some big jumps. XRP is probably one of your biggest jumps, but heck, XRP is down to twenty eight cents today. Wow, <laughs> you know <laughs> that's really good for XRP. Uh, Let's see, Litecoin, 55 bucks. That's still cheap for a Litecoin, by the way, guys. That's still cheap. $55 is still cheap for a Litecoin. Uh, I think Litecoin is one of your better investment coins right now if you want to invest in uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, okay, uh, so now we're on. What uh, what all have we covered here? We've covered most stuff. Uh, bonds and rates. Here we go. Uh, we haven't covered bonds and rates. Falling bond yields today. Uh, I mean, this is just ridiculous, the fact that these bond yields are all falling all the way across the board. But if what I see here is I see the uh, short end of the yield uh, creeping up. It's at 2.07% now, the short end of the yield. And the long end of the yield has been going nowhere. And so this is a flattening yield curve, you know. So the yield curve is still flattening even more. Uh, now, I'll tell you somebody, something that's creeping up on us. Right here, here is a creeper. It's creeping up on us, and we don't see it. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not in the news right now. Uh, here it is, Deutsche Bank. She's down under, under 10% again, 9.81%. She's down 2.29% on the day today, you know. She's creeping up on us. She's craw crawling up on us from behind. Now, Turkey, uh, we talked about that already, and uh, this is the big thing that's in the news today, and I'm going to tell you what. We're going to have to wait and see what happens with Turkey, but it's not going to be quite so easy to bail out Turkey. Uh, Turkey is more of a mess that's harder to bail out, and it's a bigger country, too. And uh, Turkey could evolve into something uh, bigger because there's an awful lot of countries that are ready to go. The rate of pop. China being one of them. Can you imagine if China popped? But, I mean, China's ready to go. China's ready to pop. Uh, Canada's ready to pop. <laughs> the country right here where I'm at is ready to pop. Uh, part of the reason why Canada's ready to pop is real estate prices have went so high. The banks have extended out uh, 
to people who have real estate. Like, say you own a house in Ontario. Uh, it could be a shack. It's worth a million dollars. Those are the assessed values. Uh, the bank comes along and says, okay, well, we'll, uh, we'll extend you a, a line of credit on the value of your home. Uh, so uh, the home's worth a million, so they extend a $500,000 line of credit to this person. Well, suddenly this person is into wealth that they've never had before in their life. Uh, they want to go out and see America, you know, so they go and they buy one of these big Winnebago's and a big Jeep uh, CJ or whatever and a trailer to haul the Jeep in and they put it all on the back uh, and they got like $250,000 invested or half of their line of credit invested in this motorhome. Well, what does a brand new motorhome do? Initially, you buy a brand new motorhome. What does it do? And the Jeep that they buy or whatever they buy. What does it do? Well, as soon as you drive the thing off of the lot, it depreciates like 10% in the first five minutes. You know? So here they've extended them this line of credit. And now all of a sudden what happens is they come in here to Canada. The real estate bubble pops. And these people are, are have all had these lines of credit extended to them. Suddenly they can't pay. They start losing their jobs. The next thing you know that happens is is the, is the banks in Canada are going to take it on the chin because these become non-performing loans. So the guy borrowed two hundred fifty thousand dollars on his line of credit on his home. Now his home isn't even worth two hundred fifty thousand dollars total. He owes the two hundred fifty thousand dollars back to the bank, right? And he can't pay because he just lost his job. Now you get hundreds of thousands of people across Canada. The same thing happened. The same scenario happened, and over and over and over again. And suddenly these Canadian banks are going to be in trouble because they've got a lot of non-performing loans that aren't going nowhere. And suddenly Canada starts to look more like Italy does right now, you know. And Italy's already there. Italy's already there. They've already got their non-performing loans. Uh, they've They've been able to somehow keep this Italy situation going. The Italian government had to borrow like 20 billion euros not too long ago to keep their banks from going under. The banks take about six months to go through that money. That was about four months ago, I guess, or five months ago. The banks must be almost through that money. They go out and they, they buy new Lambos, new Lamborghinis with the money that they get from the, from the Italian government, you know, and they, the, the bailout money. The bankers live high on the hog because it's just like pouring money through a sieve. It's like pouring water through a sieve. Is water going to stay in the sieve? That's the way pouring money into these into these systems and institutions. That's where the money goes. It just flows out the other end. And so the debt keeps getting bigger and bigger. And the answer is just to keep piling on more debt. This is all going to end badly. Listen, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next show. Bye-bye.